gentle. Here. I got it. <laughs> if you want. Okay, good. So yeah, if we could, if we could have questions, that would really help get the conversation going. Anybody? You want to look at it? Yeah. Yes, you will have never seen it. <laughs> How did you get the idea to actually write a book? Um, it was sort of a necessity because I get asked a lot about a lot of this stuff. And a lot of this stuff is not something you can really explain with words. And usually I end up trying to draw diagrams for people, which invariably really get the idea across. I mean, you can't. How do you describe a color? seeing sounds and all that stuff. So just started to save myself the time of having to say over and over and over again. I just started compiling stuff. And then I was like, people really want this. You know, people kept asking me for this stuff. So I was like, maybe I should just really make a book. And the more I made it, the more I realized that people were using the information for themselves and for people they knew. Kids they knew, especially after I found out I was autistic, because this book took nine years to do. And when I started it in 2002, I didn't know I was autistic yet. I was basically, I just called myself eccentric. That's where the name came from. And it was just supposed to be a book about somebody who was eccentric who had all these oddities. And then over the course of doing the book, I started picking up diagnoses. And, um, that's why it's sort of there's second and third edition notes in the book as you go through it. Because some of the chapters that are before I found out I just left to pass, just sort of to show my mindset before even knowing what I was. And then I added in notes that really clarified stuff after I found out what was going on. And it's more or less a bridge between what I live with and you know everyone else. So that they really know what it's like. I'm sort of in this weird position where I can talk about it. Um, when I was a kid before puberty, I was more of your more typical autistic person. And um, when you hit puberty, your brain goes through another growth spurt where it focuses on social relationships and all that sort of thing. And that's why teenagers go into that mode once they hit that point. And for me, it was enough to sort of sort of push me over the line into like a sentient state. I started recognizing myself and that there were other people around me and that sort of thing. And after that, it was sort of a slow build into what I am today, but I can still get back into that state. And yeah, kind of we were back and forth. <coughs>
going when you were writing the book? Like what in what what like what kept you going? You know, I'm not entirely sure. It was I don't know. It was like there was this thing, like I don't want to say it's a person. It was this really angry, stubborn two year old in my head that demanded that this thing be done. And it would kill me to do it. There were times when I was so sick, so mentally ill, and so really not functioning. And I'd still have this beast in me, ramming me into the wall to get stuff done. And I'll tell you, it wasn't comfortable, in all honesty. Doing this book was not fun. Um, did you ever think about giving up during the mill? Did, were there certain points? When you were writing, did you did you think about they can take it, they can do it? God yes, I wanted to stop so many times. <laughs> There's so many times I'd be in. This is my therapist. I'd be like, I want to stop this thing, but it won't let me. I know it's impossible to get this published, but it won't just let it die. I was all ready to go on to lots of other stuff. Oh, you can you connect this to like OCD or something? Oh God, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I have OCD pretty hardcore. Oh. Yeah, I, like I used to have it so bad that literally I could not move without like breaking down. It's a mess, isn't it? People don't realize how devastating OCD is. I take a lot of medicine to keep mine under control. And I say out of all the stuff that I have, the OCD is probably the only thing that was ever really capable of killing me. It's not, I mean depression can be pretty powerful, panic anxiety can be pretty powerful, but by themselves, usually doesn't motivate somebody to kill themselves. It's the OCD that takes it and pushes you past your limits. And eventually it takes over to the point that you don't exist anymore. All there is is this driving stuff in your head. It's like you can't turn off this radio that's constantly going in your head. The only way to get away from it is sleep, really. And then you just end up sleeping all the time. And are you are you doing better now or yeah when you were like what was like the changing point in your life like like there's a certain point where everything changes like you could be one thing and then you could be the other was there a particular point where you decided to put uh like think more clearly, like write, like write down your experiences throughout your life. Um, well, every time I hit one of those paradigm shifts, it would make a new era. And the first chapter of the book, 21 Stages, has the first 21 stages that I hit. Because I go through these whole warps of, of perception. Fairly awesome. Like, off, off, often. Yeah, do you have one? Yeah. Yeah, if you've, if you've read Autobiography of an Automaton, which was actually the original, original book, just like the first... Give him a page number. Well, look on your book. <laughs> I wrote it. How am I supposed to? <laughs>